Japan is open to the world and you're on the trip of a lifetime. But after a tragic little excursion to the Pokemon Center, that you find that your accommodation budget is uh, woefully skinned. Fortunately though, Japan does have a solution that's not going to cost you your last remaining pinky finger. I'm of course talking about the legendary Capsule Hotel. Tonight, we're staying in Osaka, Japan's third largest city and the 10th largest urban area in the world. While Tokyo is the bustling heart of Japan with crowded streets and towering skyscrapers, Osaka is more open, laid back, and just a touch grubbier. The people are friendly and the food is everywhere. Referred to as the kitchen of Japan, popular street vendor dishes locally being takoyaki, fried octopus dumplings, and okonomiyaki, a savory pancake with toppings of your choice. And it's here that the world's first capsule hotel opened in 1979 in the central Umeda district designed by Kisho Kurukawa, renowned Japanese architect and one of the founders of the Metabolist movement, most famously known for the iconic Nakagin capsule tower designed so that the capsule rooms could be removed and replaced. This idea never truly came to fruition, but the tower stood till early this year when sadly it departed Tokyo's Ginza skyline, being demolished after a long campaign to save it as a cultural icon. Metabolism was a post-war Japanese architectural movement that fused the idea of megastructures with those of organic biological growth. Kurokawa believed in a state of impermeance due to Japan, a country with a history of constant earthquakes, typhoons and volcanic eruptions, and of course the recent destruction of the cities from World War II, led to an uncertainty about existence, a lack of faith in the visible, and a suspicion of the eternal. A sentiment included in his designs were intentions for growth and reduction and recycling as needed, like that of a living organism. The Metabolism Manifesto included plans for sea and even space-based cities. While fascinating in concept, they were never really adopted into the mainstream or really flourished. But the Capsule Hotel did, spreading out from Osaka to Tokyo and other Japanese major cities and even abroad. The idea was simple, a small self-enclosed cheap accommodation for those who did not require or could not afford a more conventional hotel, costing an average of between 2 and 4,000 yen per night. Originally targeted towards Japanese businessmen, many of the original capsules were male only. While this can still be the case at some older establishments, the majority now do cater to women as well. But with just a small curtain for privacy in each individual capsule, genders are segregated by different floors to avoid any uh, sneaky peeking. Oh my. Older capsule hotels will feature traditional shared onsen baths, again, separated by gender, so get those naughty thoughts out of your head, but new ones will often have private showers for individuals. Arriving at a capsule hotel, you will need to remove your shoes and change into the provided yukanta with small lockers that can often be frustrating for those with larger bags, but you can check those at the lobby. Anemones such as toothbrushes and towels are also provided, which make them ideal for people that miss their last train or are traveling light on a business trip. Capsules have often being criticized by Western publications for comparing them to sleeping in a corpse drawer in a morgue and recommending that claustrophobic guests stay away. You know, but honestly, I find them quite comfortable, even myself being a touch on the large side for living in Japan. They are even my preferred choice for short trips due to the novelty. My one criticism being that some capsules don't quite have the best airflow, which can make them a bit of a stuffy experience, but better maintained capsules do often come with their own aircon systems. Oh, and there's almost always at least one other capsule resident that snores well into the night. <laughs> Come on, man. But while the origin of the capsule was completely utilitarian, capsules gained something of a legendary reputation to travelers as a unique experience that should not be missed out on. Catering to this international crowd, a new ultra-modern and luxury capsule experience has been seeing a rise in popularity in the recent years, with futuristic capsules such as Nine Hours providing an experience akin to being a lowly crew member on a starship, complete with its own uniform in place of traditional yukata pajamas that are usually provided. Then there's also the comfort and convenient focused multimedia pods with reclining beds and projectors controlled with a complimentary iPhone which can be found at Kyoto's The Millennials Capsule Inn. Specialty themes and features are a trend in the competitive modern capsule stay and tourism industry. 
Which brings us back to tonight. I'll be staying in Osaka's newly opened Ninja and Geisha Hotel, which feature traditional Japanese ukiyo-e woodblock interiors located in Awaji, just 16 minutes away from central Umeda Station by train on the Hankyu Line. Travelers taking this line on the weekend can complement the traditional art theme by taking the Kyo Train Garaku, artistically designed with Japanese gardens and real tatami mat seats. Awaji, a suburb of Osaka undergoing redevelopment, is a great convenient place to stay when visiting Osaka with the new five-story building just one minute walk away from the station and more importantly McDonald's come again very reasonably priced at 2,800 yen a night, the entrance is something you'd expect from a Japanese shrine. The capsules are beautifully designed and spacious and thankfully feature larger sized lockers than the average capsule hotel and feature some art bangers such as the Great Wave of Kanagawa, Raijin and Fujin, and this guy making the meme hand gestures. A real highlight for me was the lounge, which features a warm Japanese paper lantern design, very reminiscent of Kyoto's Yasaka Jinja, a great place to unwind and get some work done or chat with some fellow travelers. You can even fill out an Emma board while you're here, which are usually wooden plaques found at Japanese shrines for prayers and wishes, here serving in place of the standard traveler's book. It's a fun little touch to the whole theme. Of course, the real benefit to any capsule hotel is their central location, almost always adjacent to a train station, and without too much to do in your small box, it's best to get out there and explore the city. Osaka is an eclectic mix of the old, new, stylish and gaudy, and nothing quite captures this aesthetic more than Namba Yasaka Shrine. Rebuilt after being burnt down in 1945 during an air raid, the shrine's main draw is a 12 meter tall and 11 meter wide lion head statue. <laughs> But why a lion? Well, the huge open mouth will literally suck out and swallow any evil spirit haunting you, leaving your soul squeaky clean, with the good luck to succeed in any business or school-related endeavor. And that's really true, I ain't lying. <coughs> Fibbing to you. The shrine is located just five minutes away from Number Park's mall and station, making it a great little escape from the consumerism of the urban area. For travelers in January, you can even bear witness to a massive tug-of-war festival on the third Sunday. And while the city has some great places to visit during the day, it's hard to beat Osaka at night. A walk through Dotonburi along the river with the sights and sounds of one of the most fun Japanese cities around, all with a wafting smell of fried street goodness to accompany your stroll. This is a place that really rewards some exploration. If you enjoyed this video, then be sure to give it a like. And if you're planning a trip to Japan, then you need to check out that video to see just what has changed and what new rules are in place after the country has opened. And cheers. Oh, it's hot. Oh, it's so hot.